Hi, welcome to our third session. Today is all about what you can expect from established labour, but we'll also take a look at some of the natural and pharmaceutical pain relief options for you to choose from. Let's start by looking in detail at the three stages of labour. In the first stage of labour, you'll be experiencing about three contractions in 10 minutes, which last at least a minute or more. These contractions are helping your cervix to dilate from about four centimetres to 10 centimetres. If it's your first baby, this normally takes about 12 hours. With subsequent babies, it's usually twice as quick. That said, it can be quicker or slower as babies sometimes have their own agenda. If you're exhausted from a long latent phase or your baby is in a back-to-back -back position, your labour may progress more slowly than recommended and your midwife may suggest a few ways to help speed things up. From changing position to emptying your bladder or possibly breaking your waters. In the first stage of labour, your midwife will be listening to your baby's heartbeat every 15 minutes to check on how well they're coping with labour. If your baby needs to be continuously monitored, you'll be on an obstetric unit and a CTG will be used. This takes a continuous measurement of your baby's heartbeat as well as measuring your contractions. Your midwife will offer you a vaginal examination every four hours. This is the best way for them to determine the position of your baby. They're checking how dilated your cervix is and also feeling for the suture lines and the fontanelles, the soft spots, on your baby's head in relation to the pelvis. At about eight centimetres dilated, your contractions may start to intensify. This is known as transition and is often when women ask for more pain relief. Sometimes you may feel the need to push at this stage. In this case, your midwife may advise you to adopt a position that takes the pressure off your cervix and she'll coach you in how to breathe through the contractions rather than pushing, as this could cause your cervix to bruise and swell. At 10 centimetres dilated, your baby's head is through the cervix and you've reached the second stage of labour. This is the time to start pushing. Your midwife will now listen into your baby's heartbeat every five minutes to check they're still coping well with labour. NICE guidelines recommend women do not push for more than three hours. However, to protect your pelvic floor, your midwife may recommend some assistance if it looks like it may take longer than two hours. Your midwife will be giving you continuous support at this stage and encouraging you to push for as much of the contraction as possible to help get your baby around the corner of the pelvis. Your birth partner plays a hugely important role too, supporting you with lots of motivation and encouragement, cool flannels and sips of water, or simply supporting you physically in different birth positions. Unlike in the films, your baby doesn't pop out as soon as the head is first seen. It can take a little while for the head to descend, which you want. These forwards and backwards movements are protecting your perineum, stretching the vagina slowly and reducing the likelihood of tears. With the birth of your baby's head, it's then just a couple more contractions to the birth of their body and you'll meet your baby for the first time. Congratulations. If you're having twins, twin two will ideally be delivered within the next 30 minutes or so. So you'll be encouraged to keep pushing. With your baby born, you're now in the third stage of labor. And there are a few things that you can add to your birth preferences here. Firstly, the NICE guidelines recommend having skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby as quickly as possible after birth and that separation from your baby for routine postnatal procedures such as weighing the baby are avoided within that first hour. Research shows that babies who spend an hour in skin-to-skin -skin contact are significantly less stressed after birth, they cry less, it boosts bonding with parents, and when they do start to feed, they digest their food better. 
Your next decision is how long to wait before cutting the umbilical cord and choosing who you want to cut it. Most birth units delay cutting the cord for at least a minute to let the blood still stored in the placenta flow down into the baby. You can choose to wait until the cord stops pulsating so that you know that all the blood has been transferred, or you might choose not to cut the cord at all. Explore your options. The delivery of your placenta may happen before, during or after your baby's first feed. There are two options for you to choose from. Physiological management is when you birth your placenta without any help. This may be fine if you've had an uncomplicated birth. And it usually takes about an hour. The second is active management. This is the option that the um, NICE guidelines recommend as it's associated with a lower risk of postpartum haemorrhage and or a blood transfusion. That's because you're given an injection which, which helps speed up the process and reduces your blood loss. Your placenta will be delivered within about 10 minutes and your midwife will help you by pulling on the cord. So that's the three stages of labour complete. Let's go back a bit and explore the pain relief options available to you. Firstly, there are plenty of natural options you might like to think about, including breathing techniques, hypnobirthing, massage and aromatherapy, visualisations and mantras. These are all proven to have a positive impact during labour and are well worth looking into. Whatever you choose, it's important to practice, ideally with your birth partner, so you both know what to do when you're actually in labour. Water births are worth considering too. Water is known to improve blood flow to the womb, make contractions less painful, and can even help you have a shorter labour with less interventions. Finally, being active and mobile in labour is so important. Gravity is your friend, encouraging your baby down the birth canal. If you need a rest, lying on either your left or your right hand side is still considered an active position, but do avoid reclining on your back as this makes it harder for your baby to get around the bend in your pelvis. Another way the films have labour all wrong. There's absolutely no harm in wanting to go for the drugs in labour. Each of us is different and there's no right or wrong way to give birth. The first two options I'm going to discuss are available in all birth settings including your home, as they're administered by a midwife. Gas and air is available throughout labour. It works best if you take deep lungfuls throughout a contraction, as it wears off quickly. It's very drying on your lips, so do pack a really good lip balm. Pethidin, or diamorphin, is available in the first stage of labour, as it does cross the placenta, so if given too close to birth, it can actually impact your baby's breathing or their first feed. Pethidin can help you recuperate your energy levels, for example, if you've had a long latent phase, and it may help you avoid needing an epidural, so don't rule it out. An epidural is only available in an obstetric unit as it's given by, by an injection into your spine, so it requires an anaesthetist. An epidural gives you complete pain relief from the very top of your abdomen all the way down to your toes. Having an epidural can mean that you have a longer second stage of labour and it does also increase your likelihood of needing an instrumental delivery. However, research shows that you can mitigate this risk by waiting for up to an hour before you start pushing and then lying on either your left or your right hand side rather than sitting in a reclined position on the bed. Let's end today's session with a quick recap of your birth partner's role in established labour, as they play such a key part in supporting a positive birth experience. They're your advocate, asking questions and helping you communicate your birth preferences. They're your cheerleader, helping you maintain a positive birth environment and giving you lots of motivation. They're looking after both your and their own well-being, keeping up both your energy levels with food or snacks and water and isotonic drinks. Keeping you cool and helping you go to the loo regularly. 
and finally supporting you in using your relaxation techniques. During our next session, we'll take a look at planning for the unexpected, exploring medicalised labour and coping strategies should this situation arise. I look forward to seeing you then.